welcome to the photographer tutorial series. This is Jimmy the Fontmeister, and this is the beginner's guide to hinting. Now, what I've done here in Photographer is I've opened up the bitmap editor just to talk about pixels for a while. Your screen is made up of dots called pixels, and the shape of your character is displayed by showing these pixels on an invisible grid on your screen. So it follows that some of the things you draw will fall in between the spaces between the pixels and they would be blurry and thus they were nudged back onto the grid. This is what hinting does. Hints are instructions inside your font which nudge characters so they look as good as possible on your computer screen. The entire font is seen as a group of blue zones which keep tra track of these things. This nudging process is calculated by examining things like the average width of the stems of your characters. Now the entire font is seen as a group of blue zones which keep track of these kinds of things. When you're in the process of working on, the, on a character, the hints may become changed from what they were at first because maybe you moved part of the character into a different blue zone or changed the width of one of the stems. Let me play around with a character here and I'll show you what I mean. Usually the hinting is taking place without you realizing it because you have auto hint here on the hints menu turned on. And you didn't even know it. It's just kind of on by default. In most cases this is going to work out fine, but what about if you open an existing font and change one of the characters or add a character? So we're going to make this uh, stem here wider. Now what I'm going to do is go over here to the layers palette and turn the hints on. You can see the hints. Here they are, these little arrows that are nudging the character in a certain direction. Now uh, what you're going to see is that the hints that were here for the stem of this character, they're now not correct because this blue zone here is not as wide as this stem like the other ones are. So what you can do is go up here to auto hint and you'll see that now it has corrected the hinting. Now you can see that the hints have been changed to conform to the average width of the stems for all the characters in the font. The bottom line is always re-hint a font after you edit a character and life is going to be good again. Now we said that hinting was for Roman characters. That means 90 degree angles and 45 degree angles. So if you create some kind of artwork, then you're going to have a problem because the hinting could distort that artwork because it's trying to assume that these shapes are supposed to be averaged like the rest of the characters are, the Roman characters. So you could learn how to do manual hinting and learn how to hint a, uh, an artsy type uh, shape, a, a glyph, but if you don't want to do that, what you could do is prepare your artwork in a vector editor like Illustrator and paste it into Photographer and just make sure that when you paste it that auto hint is turned off. So what you will have done then, you have to really get this straight here, is you've hinted the font when all it had in it was Roman characters. Then you turned off auto hinting, then you pasted the logo in the font and now you can see on the hints layer here there are no hints for that character. I only wish I had a dollar for every customer who contacts me over the years and says uh, I created a logo in my font and now it looks fuzzy and that's because they have hints in their logo uh, and they left auto hint turned on. So it's really not that hard if you follow the steps that we uh, gave here in this little video and you can find out more details on manual hinting in the Photographer Tech Notes. These are on the Photographer page at fontlab.com or in the Photographer User Manual. Well, that's about it for the Beginner's Guide to Hinting. Let us know if you want to see some more on this topic or other topics. And be sure to refer to your user guide for details.